Let's see. OK, here we go. My obsession with energy and energy security and started um, with this book. Um, and some of you may recognize this. And it covers renewables. It talks about uh, disruptions to our energy supply. And it was published in 1981. So I was 14. And I remember reading this cover to cover. When you're 14, that means a lot. And I actually kept the original copy. It's a National Geographic special report on energy. And it was as a result of the second oil shock. And now we're past the, the third oil shock. And it looks like after three kicks to the head, we're ready to get serious about our energy policy. Um, so let's talk about energy storage and smart grid. What is the problem? And why are we as a firm so focused on it? Um, I think probably about 50% of our resources going forward over the next year in the corporate finance side are going to be allocated to this space. So the challenge is complex. This is a mathematical representation of a complex network. Essentially, you have a system where, for the grid, inputs and outputs vary in magnitude, generators and users of energy. And they also vary as a function of time. And in order to balance the system, it's, it's a little bit hairy. Um, you also have a requirement where you have to be up all the time. And this is not a market where you could have free market forces at play to optimize a solution because you cannot be down. It would be like uh, there are certain areas of our national activity, say the military, where you would not have a free market system. Um, because if you don't have power on all the time, you're talking about civil political consequences at, at the grassroots. And a stable democracy would, would uh, see this as an issue. Um, a lot of people are looking at this problem as if it's an IT intelligence problem of solving complex sets of multivariable differential equations. But the truth is this system, the topology, the structure of this network is going to be a direct result of the energy storage. So depending on the energy storage cost and performance, the network could change completely. And you could actually be, be everything starts with energy storage. So we do not see smart grid as a, as a topic where energy storage is a subset. We see smart grid, the smarts, being the tail that wags the dog. And the, the main issue is storage. So what does this problem look like on a time basis? Right now, 90% of our electricity production is either fossil fuels or nuclear in most of the developed world. So this is the, from the DOE, uh, Bonneville Power Authority. This is about a week uh, span. And the red represents balancing energy inputs into the grid. This is in Oregon. And the blue line represents wind. In this case, renewables, just noise. Right now, transient renewables, not considering hydro, because hydro does not behave like wind and solar. Um, it represents about 1% of the US energy inputs into our grid. So right now, they're not a problem, but they will become a problem. This is data from NREL, and it shows the, the net load and load um, with the wind inputs. Again, this is very noisy. I'd like to try to keep the questions towards the end, if that's possible. Um, so again, renewables are a disruptive input into this network, to this power network. Now, what are the possible solutions? There's a lot of different markets within the energy storage um, space. And some of them can supply energy um, for long periods of time, so there's a different price point. Um, 
and as far as reliability. So time and reliability determine the, the price point. Some of the most valuable energy is, is this is black start. It sounds like a, a, a DARPA project, but it's basically something that you, you need. Like in the case of nuclear power plants, it's, if you have a system failure, it's really nice to be able to operate the nuclear power plant so things don't go wrong. So they require several of these backup power systems. Um, so at the bottom here, this would be high premium cost and then less expensive. So there is, there's several segments within the energy storage space. Looks like an art project, but in fact, it's uh, also enrolled data and it shows different solutions. This is an incomplete list and it's, this graph is mostly dominated by battery technology and you have discharge time, so for how long the energy can be supplied into the system and this is the amount of power. Um, you also have compressed air, you have uh, flywheels um, and uh, hydro uh, backup, so basically pumping um, water into a dam where you would then be able to, to, to get it at a, at a peak uh, time. Um, there's a big challenge here because the end game solution, the, the market requirement in energy storage is not kilowatts or megawatts, it's gigawatts or many gigawatts and it's not a time scale of a few milliseconds or, or a few minutes or hours, but days. So the solution we're looking for is somewhere in that corner. So it's, it's very blank and empty solution space, but of course this is what's currently conceived. That's not what's in the pipeline. That's what we have right now. Um, Another way to look at the different solutions in a more detailed way is uh, there's five segments of energy storage. You have uh, electromechanical. Most people think energy storage is batteries, but that's only a subset. Um, flow batteries is, is essentially an open battery where you have two sets of chemicals um, producing energy. So, and then fuel cells. Um, obviously, there's, there's a lot of challenges there. For portable power, they make a lot of sense. For uh, bulk scale uh, energy storage for the grid, um, cost is a big issue there. Mechanical flywheels have been around for a long time. They're improving them. Um, investments obviously have fallen off in that area over, over the last few years, um, over the last 24 months. And then you have hydrostatic solutions. Some of these are not market solutions like a hydro dam storage. It's not something that you, know, you can decide to do. <laughs> you, 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 um, and just like compressed air, you don't have a, a, a fortuitous huge cavern that you can seal and pump a bunch of air into. Um, so if this is uh, scalable, you're talking about you know, um, steel or uh, compressed air um, containers. So there's obviously cost challenges there. And the two more interesting areas, <clears throat> as far as innovation and cost competitiveness looking forward, are the ones marked with the asterisks, the electrical and thermal. Um, the superconducting uh, magnetic energy storage is uh, basically a superconducting induction storage system. Um, but the, the challenges there is you have to super cool the system so it takes a lot of energy to maintain the energy and you know superconductors are not where we need them to be for this solution so the energy decay is actually quite fast. Um, it, it works for some markets but as far as the end game solution without some disruptive scientific technical innovation is challenging. Ultra, crap, ultra, ultra caps are very uh, interesting because there's material science innovations that are now hitting the market or, or starting to, where they, uh, they hold a lot of promise, but you know, we'll see. And then thermal, 
is a combination of old and new. You have some very old uh, energy storage systems based on steam and then the molten salt where you just, you're not using, it's not a, a salt battery, not to be confused with uh, uh, molten salt batteries, but the, the thermal storage um, where you're just using a cheap material to store a lot of energy. Um, and maybe salt is not the best, but those, both in the electrical and the thermal, if you take a bottoms-up approach to the solution, what do the laws of physics and, and, and chemistry allow for as far as something which is scalable and potentially cheap? Those may be the most attractive. Um, and I don't want to knock um, batteries because for portable power, it's very hard to beat batteries. Now, let's take a look at the, at the, at the year and the financial markets. The, it's, a, it's been a tough year. <laughs> and it's probably over the last 18 months, the most challenging investment climate in the life of most uh, finance professionals. And I think you'd have to go back to 1929, 1939 to, to have a similar experience. Um, it's been slim pickings as far as transactions. Um, so if, if we look on a limited basis, this is CAP IQ data, US-based companies that are addressing the grid level energy storage um, and only looking, no shelf registrations, but just completed transactions um, and completed uh, private placements and in, in public offerings, only a few of the market segments actually got capital um, as far as cap IQ. And this is out of 24 transactions, uh, $273 million. It's not a lot. So mostly going to batteries. Um, and I would argue a lot of that is going to end up in our transportation infrastructure, which is a good thing. Um, fuel cells is the next. And then you have EV charging infrastructure. And that's mostly a function of the ecotality um, grant uh, the, with the DOE. Um, and then diversified, you have some companies that are addressing multiple areas of energy grid, uh, the energy uh, storage problem. Um, so where are the other transactions? This obviously is a subset of the entire universe. So you've got VCs um, where they're trying to do things under the radar. You have strategic investments. And you have a lot of instances where you have large corporations making investments in divisions, trying to fund innovation internally. And those can't, are not easily tracked. And it's very hard to, to get those. It's impossible to get those, those figures, at least for, for us. Um, I would argue that's where most of the investments are going on. And then who's looking at doing deals in this space? Who's funding it? Well, the, it's the usual suspects. Private equity funds, these venture capital funds, hedge funds, strategic investors again. Um, and then, of course, right now, one of the biggest sources of financing is the DOE, and the, the only challenge there is getting an effective investment committee to deploy those taxpayer dollars, but that's, uh, that's another topic altogether. Um, so how are investors thinking about the 